this video, we're gonna show you the application of an ulnar gutter cast. Ulnar being it's on the ulnar side where the small finger and ring finger are. And we are going to be including the fourth and fifth digits on this cast. There may be times when a physician will ask you to put an ulnar gutter cast on to include the third, fourth, and fifth digits. It will be the same application other than your stockinette will cover the third, fourth, and fifth digits. This is probably one of the funnest short arm casts you can put on with the fingers incorporated in it for an ulnar gutter cast. A lot of people use splints during the uh, duration of their fracture management and a lot of physicians will ask and request a ulnar gutter cast, especially if they're an athlete and they might be playing football or another sport. We found that casts are a better experience for patients. Anytime a patient has ever transitioned from a splint to a cast, they always say the cast was much more comfortable and it's usually a little bit sleeker and uh, smaller. You're gonna have better patient compliance because they cannot take an ulnar gutter cast off. That's if you put it on correctly, but they can take a splint off. Ulnar gutter and radial gutter, we start the cast the same way as we're doing a short arm cast with the arm stockinette and the thumb stockinette. And where the injury is typically in the digits or the metacarpals, the cast does not need to be as long. So you can go shorter on the forearm unless your physician has another request. Once you find these techniques, they just make the application so much easier. Put a couple of them on and you see how the process is and you see the patient satisfaction and it's rewarding. It's all about rhythm on the short arm ulnar gutter cast as you start to apply the cast material. If you start your technique and get it down, you'll just use that same technique over and over. A lot of people get a little confused when they get out to the digits. They're not quite certain what direction to wrap and how much to wrap. But once you get a system down and you know that it will be reinforced and strong enough for the duration of the fracture management, you get a lot of confidence and feel a lot better about doing these because these can be very intimidating casts to put on. It's important to remember how long the patient's going to have this cast on if you're transitioning them from a splint into the ulnar gutter cast. It's important to put a little bit of buffer between the fourth and fifth digit there before you put on your cast padding to help keep it from macerating between the fingers and just makes it a little bit more comfortable for them.
there's a lot of techniques you can use here. You can get one inch splint material, put a strip on the dorsal and volar side. I'll take a two inch piece of splint material and just cut about a half inch. If it's a pediatric patient, a one inch piece would work perfectly. The idea of this is just to reinforce the strength so you're not having to use a lot of cast material to make it bulky. You'll notice that in this process that he did not dunk that in the water and get it wet. This is something that you want to set up slowly so that you have time to apply your cast roll around it before it sets up. Have the patient turn their hand over so their palm of the hand is facing down. That way you can lay that reinforcement strip right across the back. Gravity's going to help hold it on there. Put a piece of tape on there to help hold it in place as you put them in the proper position to be able to functionally wrap your cast tape. So I'll also use the fiberglass to determine them, the length of my casts. I'll fold the stockinette back so it hits the fiberglass. You want to make sure your fiberglass is going to be the length of your cast that you want and then fold those edges back. We like to double up the edges to give an extra layer of padding on the fiberglass. And usually you can get away with one two inch roll of cast material. We like two inch on these casts. If you go uh, up to three inch, it just makes it so much harder as you start moving around the digits. And we like two inch, and like I said, we you can usually get away with one roll. If you have any doubts, go back and reinforce it a little bit with another roll. But this just allows it to be a sleeker, lower profile, and still not inhibiting the functionality of the cast. It's still going to do its job. It's strong. It's going to hold them in the correct position. On the ulnar gutter I found if I start on the proximal end, work my way distally, I can come back and catch just past the web space proximally and it works out pretty good. Yeah, you're catching your tails on the back side of that thumb, so right now they're all left open. You've got to come down and catch everything distally. He cut right to the very end of the fiberglass right there to leave a lot of length on the back side to cover that MCP, so your fourth and fifth. This one he's gonna cut not quite as deep to give yourself some room to get through there, plus it's coming longer out on the distal end of the fingers on the fourth and fifth. Once you get to that point, you don't have to cut it. Go around a couple times, make sure you have a nice clean edge out on the distal end. Come back up, catch as close as you can into the web space there. And then here you're gonna turn, catch your angles, and you're gonna catch all of your wings that you've left open there, and then go from there. A lot of times you'll have enough cast material to catch that web space one more time. So you end up having three layers through there, and then you come back and catch your wings so they don't fold back up on you. And again, you'll, as we emphasized on the radio gutter cast, he didn't get his cast material very wet. He just lightly dunked it in the water so that it would dry up on him and be a dead roll before he was finished. Yeah, maybe for your first cast or your first time ever putting on one of these ulnar gutters or radio gutters, just barely even get it wet. And then that's going to give you adequate time to fight yourself going through the web space, figuring out where you're going, and just gives you more time to work with the fiberglass before it starts to harden and to cure. So 
So this point of the cast application is important to put a really good mold on the cast. We don't have the stability going up the forearm as a short arm cast, so you gotta get a really good mold through the palm and the wrist and on the digits. It makes for a much better experience for the patient not having any space in there. Keep in mind the positioning, intrinsic plus, you want the MCP joints at 90 degrees and the wrist in neutral or slight extension. This will help with the patient's mobility when the cast is removed. Anytime you immobilize a joint for a long period of time, you can take a chance on losing range of motion in the joints. So this position will ensure that the patient will have the best chance of getting all the range of motion back. This is a very good technique where he just used one roll. A lot of times when we're training other cast technicians in our facility, we'll send them home with ace wraps, especially for the ulnar gutter. Send them home with a few two inch ace wraps, tell them to go practice on someone, get the rhythm down so that they feel comfortable when it comes time to do an actual cast application. Another technique that we've done a few times, we call it the fan. We've shown you a few different videos, especially on some of the walking casts or the reinforcing on the plantar aspect of the foot when you're using your cast tape and you're wrapping back and forth. Instead of going circumferentially all the way around the digits here on this ulnar gutter, you can just do a fan base back and forth about three or four times all the way from the wrist out to the distal end of the third and fourth digit and then just catch it once going through the web space between the third and fourth digit that way you're not building up the bulk between the fingers, you're building up the bulk on the gutter aspect of the ulnar side, and that's kind of your reinforcer strip. So a couple different ways to do it. You can trigger it out, play with it. Like Lance said, use the ace wraps, use the cast padding just to start wrapping and putting things in place and seeing where it lies and what's comfortable for you. As you're watching him apply this mold skin for protection, I want to just emphasize a lot of times you need to evaluate the type of patient that will be using this cast. After you're done rolling this ulnar gutter cast, first thing is you're going to want to check the patient's range of motion in the digits that are not included in the cast. Oftentimes down at the web space between the fingers that are not included, you might get a little piece of cast material there. We showed you how you can use little scissors to cut it out and then always pat it up so your finger's not rubbing on the fiberglass. It can act like sandpaper and cause abrasions on the finger. Cutting an ulnar gutter cast off is a lot easier than people make it out to be. Same technique as a short arm cast and keep in mind the splint material that you may have included on the cast and just make sure you don't cut through that or it'll just make for a harder cast removal. Keep in mind the injury the patient has if they've had any type of surgery where they may have pins on the digits or the metacarpals. You want to be cautious as you're pulling the cast off. You're not just yanking it off. And if you do that, the patient will be sure to let you know that they've got pins in there. So that's a good practice to know the injuries, casting and for cast removal.